Cold night indeed. And it's going to be difficult for these two in the opening a few moments to keep warm. Charlie Nash defending his title tonight, the European Lightweight Championship, under the darkening sky of Dublin in Daly Mount Park. An open-air fight on a very cold night indeed. And his opponent, Joey Jubilisco, the Italian who's done so much of his boxing in Australia. This is Nash. Nash tonight, boxing on his 30th birthday. The referee from Switzerland is Franz Marty. So now, Nash, the southpaw from Derry, starts a very strong favourite indeed against Jibalisco. Jibalisco wearing the white shorts and boxing orthodox. Jibalisco has only fought once in the last 18 months. Since he came back from Australia to his home uh, country of Italy, he's not lost a fight, but the opposition he's been meeting is, uh, on paper anyway, vastly inferior to the class of Nash. At least that's the theory. We shall see now as it's put to the test, whether in fact it's right. Chikolisko in the white boots and the white shirts against Charlie Nash of Derry, making a voluntary defence of this title, which he won first in 1979, which he gave up last year in order to box for the world title against Jim Watt. He came unstuck there, and he regained this European title here in Dublin at the Burlington Hotel uh, Boxing Club last December when he outpointed Francisco Leon of Spain. So Nash enjoying his second spell as European champion and boxing tonight, as I say, on his 30th birthday. Jubilisco has recently turned 27. He was 27 on May Day. Nash has had 23 wins in 25 fights and Jubilisco 19 wins in 27. Nash known to be vulnerable around the eyes, and that might be the biggest danger in tonight, but he's finding it very easy already in the opening two minutes to plant punches on this head of uh, Jubilisco, Joey Jubilisco, known in Italy as Giuseppe, Giuseppe Jubilisco, but always boxed in Australia under the name of Joey. And Nash is picking him off almost as though he's a sparring partner in this opening round, moving easily, Nash, in this cold night air on this football ground at Daly Mount Park. The sun only recently gone down. It's been a cold and wet day. The rain stopped, but it is still very cold. And this Irish crowd enjoying these opening three minutes as Nash, moving backwards behind the southpaw lead, plants punch after punch into the head of Jibalisco. Italian's head bobbing back and back and back as Nash's southpaw lead keeps hitting it. And as we come to the end of the first, it's been a good start for Nash. He's well won the first round. And really, if he keeps that sort of boxing up, then this fight will not go the scheduled 12 rounds. European title fights these days. You, they used to be over 15 these days, they're over 12 rounds. That's Tommy Donnelly, who's been with Nash ever since he was an amateur. Tommy Donnelly, now his trainer. Still working with him. Now he's a professional. Nash, the south ball on the right. Lost only twice in a professional career which started five and a half years ago. He lost uh, early on in his career with a cut eye, and the other defeat, of course, came against Jim Watt for the world title in Glasgow last year. He was stopped in four rounds after putting Watt on the floor near the start of the fight. Perhaps it was a bad thing for him to have done because Watt got up and uh, set about Nash in no uncertain fashion. Jibalisco opened his uh, professional career in Australia, in Melbourne, in 1974. So he's been a pro now for over seven years, but uh, he's very, very short of fights lately. And just that one he's had in the last 18 months 
and Nash standing for a wild left hand from Jibalesco and looks to be a little bit hurt. Anyway, he came inside for safety's sake and he's caught again by the left. And Jibalesco, the Italian, rather disconcertingly for Charlie's Irish supporters, is swinging wild and wide punches and finding Nash with them. Now those are punches Nash really shouldn't be getting caught with. And he is getting caught. And this is altogether a different second round from the first. And he's hurt again, uppercut this time, and Nash is in trouble in the second round. Jibalesco told not to pull his man onto punches. And Nash is having a very uncomfortable ride indeed in this second round, believe me. And there's another left hand, and if this goes on, Nash is not going to get through this. He really shouldn't be caught by these wide punches. Nash, very slow to see them coming, and even slower to get out of the way. And this crowd now sensing that Charlie's in trouble, and they're crying to him to keep out of trouble, but he has to take a standing count from the Swiss referee, Franz Marti. So, real trouble in the second round for Charlie Nash on his birthday. Well, Jubilisco clearly made up his mind. It was no point in standing off and getting caught like he did in the first round. And sheer attacking ferocity has paid off. Nash slightly hurt around the nose and mouth, but coming back at the end of the round. Well now, two rounds we've had. The first went clearly to Nash, and the second went very clearly to Jibalisco. So what an interesting situation we've got now in this open-air European title fight at Daly Mount Park in Dublin. Round three. Nash immediately plugs away with the southpaw lead, like he did in the first round. He needs to keep that working and keep Jibalesco away from him and keep especially away from that long left arm of Jibalesco's. Nash is right against Jibalesco's left. These two are going at it in a style that suggests they don't want to be around for 12 rounds. It's a cold night, and maybe they want to get indoors quickly. And they might. Again, Nash stands for that left hand, and again and again. He really seems to have no defense whatever against the left. And he's cut. Nash is cut over the right eye. Well, the man is vulnerable to cuts, and that has certainly been done by the left hand of Jubilisco, and Nash has got all sorts of trouble now in round three. Cut above the right eye, and the referee is calling for a doctor to have a look at it. So, in the third round, I don't think it's all that bad a cut, but it's in a very, very awkward place. And every man in Nash's corner is also getting up to have a look at it, as well as the doctor. Looks as though he might even have trouble over the left as well, I don't know. Might be a shadow. Tommy Donnelly giving a pat on the shoulder. It's up to the doctor now whether he can continue. Well, the left eye is red, but the right eye is most certainly cut. And there's a consultation going on there in which Nash is taking part. I would have thought it was entirely up to the doctor, but he seems to be consulting everybody in sight. Well, that's not a good sight. It's still bleeding, they haven't stopped the bleeding, and it's off, it's called off. No, it isn't, no, it isn't. I thought the referee was going to call it off for a minute, but he was merely bringing Nash into the ring, back into the ring. Cut over the right eye, still bleeding. Now then, if Nash pulls this out, it'll be a miracle. I don't know 
what Jibalisco expected in this fight, but what he's achieved already must surely be beyond anything he could have imagined. He's had the champion in trouble in the second, and even worse trouble in the third. And Nash now needs all his boxing skill and all his footwork to get out of this. Jibalisco warned about his punching. This run's been going three and a half minutes, but of course a lot of time off was taken while they discussed that eye. It's not bleeding too badly at the moment. Again, inside of the glove from Jibalisco. And the watch just coming up to four minutes. There's the bell. Well, Nash picked up that trouble over the right eye because he was vulnerable all the time to Jibalisco's left hand. And Nash comes up with heavy greasing over the right eye. Not surprisingly. This European lightweight championship, of course, is the one that Jim Watt used to hold before he became world champion. Looping left hand of Jibalisco finds his man, and again. Really is extraordinary the way Nash stands around and gets caught. This is the second standing count over Nash. He doesn't look too badly hurt, but he's being knocked right out of his stride every time by the left hand of the Australian, the Italian. Again and again, and I don't think Charlie's going to get too far in this fight. This is really one of Nash's worst ever fights. And Jibalisco is treating him far worse than Watt ever did. He seems totally vulnerable to any wide punch. He'd be better off staying inside. comes back and Charlie's fans begin to stand up all around the ringside and cheer for their man. Now are we going to see a sudden reversal? It'd be amazing if we do. Jimmy Lisko seems to have lost confidence for the moment. He's gone very white-faced in fact. And suddenly it's Nash's turn to rain the punches into Jibalisco's head. Round four. Extraordinary fight. One low one from Charlie, warned about it. And Nash is making a really astonishing comeback. Suddenly all the fight and fury has gone out of Jubilisco. Nash bleeding still, but not badly from the eye. I should think Charlie can hardly believe his good luck. Almost as though Jibilosko has lost heart. I don't know why, but he... He doesn't seem to want to throw too many punches. And he's blowing. He might be tired. And Jibilosko turns away and walks rather disconsolately back to his corner. So this is a quite astonishing championship fight in the open air in Dublin. With Jibalisco looking as though he was on the verge of a sensational victory in the fourth round. And then when Nash was in his worst trouble, as we'll see here, look at this. He was catching Charlie with punch after punch. And that caused the second standing count. But from that moment, Charlie's fortune suddenly took a turn for the better. Bell signals them into the centre of the ring.
Well, from what we've seen so far, anything at all could happen now. And Nash takes the initiative right away. He likes to move back. He's moving back into the left hand again. Every time he moves back and Jim Lisko swings, Charlie gets caught. champion in the fifth suddenly looking like a champion again this is a repetition of the first round Charlie's still moving around onto the left hand of Jibalisco Nash looking a little more marked now around the right eye. Marked underneath it now. Nash is uh, grazed underneath the right eye. Chibalisco's head. And Nash now seems to be ignoring the punches coming his way, riding them easily enough, and plugging away with his southpaw leads and doing well. Their breath clouding in the cold night air. Donnelly, Nash's trainer yelling at him from the corner. They've done a marvellous job on that cut over Nash's right eye. It's not bleeding at all. And it looked like a rather nasty cut at one time. So, with five rounds gone, and Nash seemingly at one time on the verge of losing his title, has suddenly re-established ascendancy. And if he keeps this up, then Nash is going to keep his title. But from what we've seen, anything could happen. Referee signalling the number of the round it is every time they come out with his fingers. Nash really has made a remarkable recovery from that bad trouble he was in in the fourth and the third. Jim is still swinging wildly, but Nash now beginning to see them coming and stepping back clear of them. And working well, one more low one, that's the third time he's been told about that. Good punches from Nash. He's working well now, it's almost as though he's got over the cold of the evening and warmed himself up a bit. Inside of the glove again from Jibalisco. He's been told about that now three times. has never been stopped in his professional career and looking strong again and Nash once again finds a sticky patch that has come through it it's quite disturbing the way Nash is so vulnerable to these swings oh, good job that was with the inside of the glove too which it was round six 
And Jibalisco now suddenly getting strong again. I really do wonder whether this cold night air has got something to do with all this. They seem to get warmed up, then they get cold and slow down, then they come on again. And Nash is hurt, and he's badly hurt, and he's over. Six round. And there's about 45 seconds to go. And he's in a bit of trouble. His knees look a little shaky. But the referee's going to let him go on, and we've got about 30-odd seconds to go in this six round. Now then, Nash has weathered one bad period. Can he weather this? Not if he keeps taking those swings. And he's gone this time. Uh, that might be the end of Charlie Nash's reign as European champion and all world title aspirations. I think it's all gone. He's bleeding badly. Eyes, nose, mouth. And he can't get up and he's counted out in the sixth round. And Joey Gibilisco, the Italian who's done most of his boxing in Australia, is the new European lightweight championship on this cold night in Dublin. Charlie Nash in Ireland, the Irishman in Ireland, has lost his European title. And I think it might be worse than that, because Nash looked to me on his back there as though that might well be the end of his championship career quite completely. And this is the moment when it all came to an end. The swinging punch is lashing in, and ironically, it was the right in the end that caught him. So this is a very, very sad night for Irish boxing. Nash is on his feet, and we're thankful about that. And one of the most extraordinary things of all about the end of this fight is that Jibalisco, the new champion, is crying his eyes out. And the reason he's crying is because he felt that he might have done a lot of damage to Charlie Nash when he saw him lying against the ropes and not getting up for a bit. And he still hasn't quite recovered from the shock of that and from the sheer delight at being the new European champion.